All right, wall fans, common sensors, podcast consumers, and of course, social media world. Welcome to episode 104 of Go Tell It to the Wall podcast. I am, of course, your favorite podcast host, the one and only Sean O'Rourke, and we got a lot of great stuff for you tonight. If you caught the teaser, possibly a new segment, but a lot, a lot, a lot of content, and we're actually somewhat on time. So, that being said, let's get into it. All right, wall fans, common sensors, podcast consumers, welcome to episode 104 of Go Tell to the Wall podcast. I am, of course, your favorite podcast host, the one and only Sean O'Rourke, and we got a lot of exciting things for you tonight in episode 104, but we always kick things off with some social plugs. That's right, you can follow us during episodes, after episodes, before episodes, whenever you so please, and you can do that in multiple locations. One of those would be Twitter. That's right, head on over to Twitter, pull out your phone, head on over there like you got to walk there or something, pull out your phone, uh, go to your Twitter app, and make sure you look up at Tell the Wall Pod. Give us a follow on there. That's the official Twitter account for Go Tell to the Wall. Uh, and of course, you can follow my own personal Twitter account, which is at Magic Muppet. That's right, at Tell the Wall Pod and at Magic Muppet. Make sure you're following both of those. You're going to get all kinds of great stuff throughout the week between episodes whenever I feel like tweeting stuff out or whenever our team feels like tweeting stuff out. Uh, so just make sure you're following those. You know you're following a bunch of idiots on Twitter anyway. May as well follow another idiot at Tell the Wall Pod and at Magic Muppet. Of course, Facebook. Facebook.com slash go tell to the wall. We are currently live on Facebook with our live feed. Uh, make sure you like our page, check back often. Again, Facebook.com slash go tell to the wall. Uh, we have admins on there that keep things in line, so it's a little less ridiculous than what you're going to find on Twitter at times. Uh, and of course, YouTube. YouTube, head on over to YouTube, search go tell to the wall, subscribe to our page. That's where you're going to find all of our beer reviews all of our show clips, as well as complete live feeds for all of the episodes, not quite all of them, all of them from episode 20 through the most current episode, because that's when we started doing live feeds. Uh, also, clips you're not going to find anywhere else that aren't included on episode, uh, the uh, actual podcast episodes, so make sure you subscribe. Uh, weirdly, YouTube numbers have been doing really well lately, uh, but we actually lost a few subscribers. I don't know what's happening. It's it's very strange. Num the the watch minutes and the and the views are going up, and somehow we lost a few subscribers over the past week. I'm not gonna sweat about it. I'm not some like influencer sitting here gonna cry. Oh no, I lost. No, no, no. If you want to, please, please subscribe to our channel. You're gonna get all kinds of good stuff there. And you know you subscribe to a bunch of other idiots on YouTube again. Uh, so just subscribe to us as well. Uh, and of course. Most importantly, all-encompassing of those things I just mentioned would be SeanO'RourkeLive.com. That's right, SeanO'RourkeLive.com. Bookmark that one. Check back often. You're actually going to find links to all of those things I just mentioned, as well as a link to our Patreon page. If you are so inclined and have the means to do so, please, please support us financially. Every dollar helps. Become an official patron, and you can get some awesome perks from Go Tell to the Wall from me personally. Uh, as well as get mentioned on the show, which I think is a big thing as well. People people love the show, and people like to get their names mentioned on here. So, so head on over to Patreon if you want to be one of those people. Become a patron. Help us out. Help us out. Uh, actually, I want to mention this before we get into stuff, and actually before I get into the beer this week. Uh, looking at adding some new segments, and I'm kind of toying around with some segments, and one of them, I, that which we added this week, is actually going to be a weekly rant. That's right. If you've been a Go Tell to the Wall listener for, for quite a while or a watcher, however you keep up with us, uh, you know that sometimes we get into some rants, gets a little crazy here, uh, usually revolving around common sense and usually involving other idiots out there that don't know what they're doing. Uh, so we're going to have kind of a weekly rant. And these a lot of this is just going to be stuff that I'm pulling out of my own personal life, out of my day-to-day -day, you know, happenings, whatever it might be, and, and we're just going to rant about it. And hopefully uh, hopefully that'll that'll 
encourage you to also rant about I don't even know what we're hopefully trying to do. It's just a new segment for the show. So let's move on past that, and uh, we will get to the weekly rant in just a moment. But before we get there, as always, beer this week. Beer this week. If you're not a regular listener, we do always have a special beer for every single episode. Uh, I won't say I'm hugely excited about this one. Hugely? Is that even a word? I'm not, I'm not overly excited about this one. I do enjoy it. Uh, I do enjoy this brewery very much. It's actually Angel City Brewery. They are right here in Los Angeles, located right in downtown Los Angeles. Uh, if you couldn't tell from the name, Angel City Brewery. And this is their Pilsner. That's right, their Pilsner. I'm not a huge fan of Pilsners usually, but I do occasionally enjoy a nice Czech Pilsner, a nice Eastern European Pilsner, and this one falls right into that category of a, of a Czech Pilsner. And of course, it's a nice craft brew out of Angel City Brewery. I love the craft breweries. They do. They tend to be a little tastier. They do a great job with their brews, and, and this is definitely an example of that. I'm, the reason I'm not crazy excited is I don't. I don't love. I don't love Pilsners, you know, but. On occasion, they're great. This is a great hot weather beer. So right now, definitely a time to enjoy this one because we're having a heat wave like ev around the world. Not even, not even at the West Coast, not even the United States. The world is having a heat wave right now. It's crazy. So if you need to cool off, pick up a nice little Angel City Brewery Pilsner, Czech style Pilsner, 5.6% alcohol content. So it's not too too strong, but it's not uh, as, as light as you're gonna find with a lot of those those gross. I like to call them grocery store beers. Uh, you know, which would be like the Buds and the Millers and, and all that stuff. Nothing against those, but they are definitely not as tasty as what you're going to find from, from a lot of craft breweries like Angel City Brewery, just being one example. Uh, so check out their Pilsner, especially if you're a fan uh, of Czech Pilsners. Check out their Czech Pilsner. Oh, you see how that works? Uh, and especially if you're in the Southern California area, it should be easy to find. I, I, this one was easy for me to find. I found it at one of the local beer stores here. Uh, so check them out. Angel City Brewing. Uh, Pilsner, Angel City Brewery. See, we're having that problem again. This one's brewery. I, I wish all the breweries would just agree we're going to be either brewery or brewing, whatever it might be, because uh, that would just make it easier on me. <laughs> it's just me being lazy. Uh, check them out. Enjoying it. Oh, yes. Get a sip of that Pilsner right there. All right, now moving on to our new segment that we're going to test out and see if everyone enjoys it and see see if it sticks, you know. Here at Go Tell to the Wall, I like to throw things against the wall and then see what sticks, and then that's kind of what we what we go with when it comes to episodes and segments within episodes. So this is the weekly rant. You know, this has been kind of bubbling up with me a lot recently. Uh, I am pretty much a full-time stay-at-home dad with my kid. I have, I have a two-and-a-half-year-old at home. Uh, so during my during the day, that's what I'm doing. I I, I work on the podcast, the YouTube channel, uh, Sean Work Live. That's all stuff I work on at night. Uh, maybe a little bit during the day if she's taking a nap or, you know, the half an hour that she gets to watch TV kind of every other day. Uh, for the most part, I, that's, that's what my days entail is, is taking care of a two-and-a-half-year-old. And a lot of that is, is taking the two-and-a-half-year-old out. We, we go on a walk uh, pretty much every day. Uh, we either go walk to the library, we'll go walk to the park. We do a good, like, two to three miles every day. Uh, it helps keep me in shape. My, my kid loves going and riding around in strollers. She loves running around at the park. She loves, loves running around the library. It's kind of, she is a bookworm, loves it. Uh, but I also live in Los Angeles, California. I live in Highland Park, very populated, popular and populated area of Los Angeles. And something that happens to me almost, I, I don't even want to say almost, it happens on a daily basis, is other drivers not paying attention. Now, I realize this is one of those things you say, well, yeah, the running stop signs and, and, and rolling through lights, whatever it might be, rolling through red lights on a right turn without actually stopping. Yes, I know these are all regular things. But even though it's regular things and we've all kind of accepted it as a, as a society, it needs to stop. It needs to stop. And here's the most important thing to remember about this. If, you, if you're one of those drivers that you're coming out of a driveway or whatever it is and you're not looking, uh, it, it, it's like two, threefold. First of all, you need to look both ways. I can't tell you how many times I'm coming to an intersection to cross uh, and I have the right of way as a pedestrian, have the complete right of way, uh, and, and a driver's only looking one direction because that's the direction the cars are coming from. Here's the thing. You're going across a sidewalk area. You need to pay attention to people on the sidewalk as well. Constantly I yell at people. And I don't get into arguments with them, but I just, I, I'll be like, hey, you, you, you got to get out of the way. It's, this is my right of way. But then on top of that, this is the big sticking point that really everybody can get behind. Because I understand people don't pay attention. We're, we're never going to completely end that. It, it's the rolling through driveways and intersections. Not just rolling through, like going through them. Uh, but seeing a pedestrian, this happens to me all the time, walking by businesses and stuff, seeing a pedestrian come into that driveway and then continuing to roll on that pedestrian, just kind of letting your car roll forward. 
And I, I've said this to people. I be, Can you just stop? And I say, and they'll say, oh, I am stopping. I'm just moving forward. Here is the big thing with that. And this is what gets me the most about it. And I've said it to people. I can't read your fucking mind. I don't know if you're rolling just because you're rolling forward a little bit or if you're rolling because you don't see me and you're not paying attention. And honestly, most of the time it's the latter. It's people not paying attention. But even if you're one of those people that you are paying attention, you're just rolling forward a little bit. Maybe someone's walking in front of you. Just stop. Just stop. Stop your car. Stop the car. Let the people cross. And then you can start rolling through. Because like I said, cannot read your mind. I don't know if you're going to run into me. I don't know if you see me. Can't read minds. And that's the biggest thing that happens so much around here in Los Angeles. And I'm getting just so tired of it. Just stop and wait. Your time is not more important than my safety, and especially the safety of my two and a half year old. It's not. It's not. And I've been there. I've bounced off car hoods. <laughs> I was an avid track runner when I was younger. I, I was a triathlete for many years. I still consider myself a triathlete. I just haven't raced in a couple of years. Been, been out running the streets quite a bit. Quite a bit. I've bounced off car hoods. Absolutely. And it's not safe. And if we all just, if, if everyone just takes an extra minute, you know, put your phone down. Don't worry about getting to the McDonald's as quickly as you can. If you're running a little bit late to pick up your kids, it's okay. 30 seconds isn't going to make that big a difference. Just stop. Stop. So easy. So easy. See a stop sign? Stop. Do a full stop. It's astounding to me. Absolutely. Anyway, that concludes our weekly rant. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, let's get into some trending on social here. Trending on social. So you know that Storm Area 51 junk that's going around right now, supposed to be happening on uh, September 20th? Ooh, that's coincidental. September 20th is also the date that the new Blink-182 album comes out. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, interestingly, if people are actually storm storming Area 51, then uh, uh, then Tom DeLonge will probably be down there at Area 51 while Blink-182 is promoting a new album. That'll be kind of interesting. Uh, but because of that, this has, of course, spawned other idiots to do things, uh, and it this is a perfect example of other idiots doing things and planning things. Uh, the day after Storm Area 51, people in Scotland are actually... Uh, Doug, I'm glad you just joined for this because I'm talking about your, your, your motherland here. Uh, people in Scotland have started a, an event page uh, where there is a plan to storm Loch Ness. That's right. In fact, the tagline is, Nessie can't hide from us all. People trying to find Nessie. And it's interesting because if you actually do a little bit of research here... Uh, on Loch Ness, because if you're not familiar with the Loch Ness monster, with Nessie, uh, the Loch, Loch Ness is actually like a a, a, a body of ocean water. It, it, it's kind of like a lake, but it's actually, I believe it's actually a uh, an inlet. So you do get tides and, and actual waves and stuff like that. And the water tends to be about 40 degrees, 40 degrees. So you could also freeze to death. I, I, I believe, I think you could freeze to death at 40 if you're in there long enough. Uh, so people are going to storm Loch Ness and they're going to look for Nessie and most likely freeze to death. Now, I do realize with the heat wave going on right now that that seems appealing, but it's not as appealing if you die. Not as appealing. And the bottom line is here, even if the Loch Ness Monster does exist, let's just leave Nessie alone. There's a reason Nessie doesn't show him or herself to all of us. Let's just leave Nessie alone. Uh, but the other bottom line is it's really just a tourist thing. And if you ever go to Scotland, you can find, like, stuff... Loch Ness monsters and all this, you know, it's it's kind of like the Koki, uh, the little frog. I mean, Kokis exist, but it's kind of like the Koki down there in uh, Puerto Rico. If you've ever ever heard of that one, uh, and then of course because of this idiocracy that is Storm Loch Ness, uh, this hashtag kind of makes sense. Uh, thank you. Multiple chains of interlocked lakes, mostly through underground channels. That's coming from my my good friend who happens to be of, of Scottish lineage. He's not from Scotland, but happens to be of Scottish lineage. I knew it was more than just a lake, because they do get waves and stuff. It's which you do in Lake Michigan, but it, it, it's like a serious... You get, you get currents and everything going through there, so you don't want to mess around. Uh, but of course, a hashtag going around right now is hashtag hottest day of the year. Uh, make sure you... Ooh, Jackalope's a good example. Uh, hottest, hashtag hottest day of the year. Please don't jump in the Loch Ness, despite, ha despite it being ridiculously hot out there. Uh, and of course, this one's trending because it's been hot as hell around the world, and in fact, Paris experienced uh, the hottest day ever. Very recently, they reached 108 degrees there in Paris. 108 degrees! It's madness. It's absolute madness. If it got to 108 degrees here in Los Angeles, I don't know what people would do. Uh, I, I'm sh it does, it does vary. It, it, 
it, it gets to 108 degrees not far from here. I mean, Death Valley's not that far, but I can't imagine if it got to 108 degrees here in the Los Angeles metro area, which would just be absolutely insane. Uh, so stay cool out there. Get some of those cool towels. Man, the UPS driver brought me a, a package yesterday. Actually brought me my, my brand new Jim Henson Funko Pop for those of you that are on the live feed. This is my absolute favorite Funko Pop now. Uh, one of my heroes, Jim Henson. I had pre-ordered this like months ago, and it came yesterday. But I, I, he comes, he comes walking up with my package. He's got one of those cool towels around, and like some, and I was just, and I know the guy because uh, we get I, we get our sticker shipments. It's always the UPS guy that brings them, and he's always like, "Hey, how you doing?" Uh, uh, and so I was like, "What are you doing? You know, are you, are you staying cool enough?" He's like, "It's it's tough." And they drive around in in like these trucks with open doors and stuff, so you're not getting a lot of air conditioning. And the poor guy was like, "Man, we'll just stay cool out there." And he's like, "I got no other choice." You know, you got to do it. So it, it, it's warm. It's warm out there. All right, moving on. Actually, we talked about this last week. Um, Instagram influencers, influencers in the finger quotes, of course, uh, and how Instagram was taking away the, the visible likes in a few countries, one of them being Canada. I believe Brazil was another one. There's a few different countries that are testing this out. Uh, well, we've gotten some backla backlash from influencers who are freaking out about this, freaking out because their likes aren't shown. Here's the thing with this, you can still like things, it's just your like totals aren't shown. And then if you go into your analytics, especially if you're an influencer on Instagram, you're still going to be able to see those likes and those views and everything else. And if you have Twitter, go and you can look at your analytics on every tweet you've ever tweeted. You, the analytics are there, it's just not showing it to people, but everyone's freaking out about this because that is their status symbol. That is how everyone knows that they're important because they've got a bunch of likes on Instagram. Give me a break. It's so ridiculous. But I, this is the one that got me the most. Some, some influencer actually said, Oh my God, I have to work eight hours a day now. To that I say, cry me a fucking river. Learn that you need to actually work. It's okay to actually work. Have some talent. You know? These are talentless people. In fact, like they're showing, there's one photo of this, this Instagram influencer and it's a woman and it, she clearly just poses in thongs all day. It's like, well, that's not a talent. That's not a talent. And I hate to be as... She's not, not even that attractive. Like, come on. You know, and you're freaking out about this stuff? Give me a break. I can't. I can't with the influencers anymore. That's enough. Uh, and then, of course, moving on to the next hashtag. Hashtag, it's only a matter of time before... And to that, I say, hashtag, it's only a matter of time before the influencer bubble bursts. So get it in now, people, because you're not, you're not doing this for 40, 50 years like normal people that work real jobs and have real careers. So just, you know that bubble is going to burst. It's going to burst. So watch out for that. But if you're interested, follow that hashtag. It's only a matter of time before, and people are actually having fun with this one. I, I enjoyed some of these. But this, of course, coming off of the, the influencer madness, right away I was like, well, yeah, that bubble's going to burst. Uh, and, of course, more idiots on social platforms uh, trending on social right now. One of these would be a couple of nursing home aides uh, did the whole felt cute thing. You know the stupid felt cute thing? Felt cute, might delete later. Because I can't think of original things to do. Just like Storm Loch Ness. Oh, Storm Area 51 got in the news and people got, you know, recognition for that. What, should, well, what, what can we do to get some recognition? Storm Loch Ness! Have an original idea, for the love of God. Uh, but of course people are still doing this felt cute thing. And we have these nursing home aides who posted a picture of themselves. One of them is in one of those, you know, the, the, the chair swing things that you... <laughs> Doug, please don't pose in thongs. Uh, nobody wants to see that. Nobody wants to see me posing in thongs either. <laughs> That's a definite. Uh, so these nursing home aides, actually one of them sitting in, in one of the swing chairs that you use to, to help elderly, well, really elderly or injured people or, or people uh, with disabilities uh, to get around. And one of them sitting in it, and their exact tweet or... or Instagram post, whatever social platform it was on, was uh, felt cute, might drop your grandma later. Again, felt cute, might drop your grandma later. Not funny. Not funny. Not funny at all. And of course, they, these two uh, nursing home aides have actually come out and said, oh, this is slander and all this other stuff and we weren't doing anything bad. Yes, you did. That right there is so disgusting and insensitive that you should lose your job. And of course, they did lose their jobs uh, and will hopefully not be working at another nursing home ever again. Whether they did this or not, it's not funny. Especially when we live in a world where you hear stories about abuse at nursing homes, elderly abuse, all this kind of thing. It's not something to joke about. It's just not. Not at all. So I'm happy they got fired. Uh, but don't do things like this. And of course, keeping along with that theme, hashtag things doctors shouldn't say. Hashtag things doctors shouldn't say. I'm not even going to give you any on here, but I am going to say 
Well, one thing that doctors shouldn't say is, uh, felt cute, might drop your grandma later. See how that works? See how we tie everything in together in a nice little bow? Sometimes it works. Most times it doesn't, but sometimes it works. Sometimes we're on the rails, despite the fact that we don't need rails. Hashtag we don't need rails. Uh, we, do, we do manage to get on the rails now and then. Uh, and one more trending on social topic. I want to talk about another hashtag here. Hashtag things to never tell your boss. Uh, this one I would recommend searching, and you're going to get a few laughs out of it, especially if you enjoy getting laughs on the social platforms. Uh, and this one I really enjoyed from, from Twitter user Grosby. Grosby. Uh, hashtag things to never tell your boss. I only drink on the job after lunchtime. Hash, uh, again, hashtag things to never tell your boss. I only drink on the job after lunchtime. It's actually pretty good advice. I wouldn't recommend drinking on the job... Uh, despite the fact that I drink on the job on a weekly basis. Maybe you shouldn't do it a lot, but if you are going to do it, do it after lunch. That's, your, that's the smart way to do it. Common sense says if you're going to drink on the job, drink after lunch. Or have a liquid lunch, and then you've already gotten your drinking in. Alright, let's move along to some entertainment news. Entertainment news. This one I'm excited about. Kevin Smith who's been in the news a bit lately, Kevin Smith. I'm a huge, unapologetic Kevin Smith fan. I've got a giant, it, it's actually called Big Ass J right over here. Uh, it's, it's a giant vinyl figure. I'm not going to pull it out from behind the, the monitor here if you've ever had the privilege of coming into the Go Tell Us The Wall studio. Uh, you've probably seen that thing. But I am an unapologetic Kevin Smith fan. I love all his movies. I don't care. Even if they're cheesy, they're dumb. I'm super excited about the, uh, the Jay and Silent Bob reboot. Fantastic trailer. Fits into the viewless universe. You know, I, and I'm not, I'm not one of those people who's going to argue with you. Well, I don't really like Kevin Smith. I'll just be like, yeah, okay, and I'll move on. Like, I, I'm not going to sit here and argue with you why you should like Kevin Smith, but I am unapologetically a, a huge Kevin Smith fan. And we got some more news from the, the View Askew Universe Kevin Smith world. Uh, looks like there are some Clerks 3 rewrites. Clerks 3 rewrites. We had heard about Clerks 3 going into development uh, years ago, and then around 2017, uh, the project kind of fell through. And, and part of that reason was uh, somebody had dropped out from the cast. Well, we go to find out that the person that dropped out was Jeff Anderson. Uh, he plays Randall, one of, the, one of the main characters from Clerks, essentially one of the clerks. It's Dante and Randall are the two clerks, uh, had dropped out of it. And now Kevin Smith has announced that they are doing a rewrite, like I said, uh, for Clerks 3. They're in rewrites right now, and it sounds like Jeff Anderson is back on board uh, for Clerks 3, so we could be looking forward to, to more, uh, more fart jokes and ridiculousness from the, the Kevin Smith VOSQ Universe world, and especially relating to Clerks. Uh, Clerks is the movie that, that inspired me to go to film school. Absolutely inspired me to go to film school. Blew my mind when I saw Clerks uh, as, a, as a teenager in the 90s. It was fantastic. Fantastic. Uh, and again, unapologetic. This one I'm... I'm unap <laughs> Doug, uh, my good friend Doug is a huge Brendan Fraser fan. Uh, no judgment. Uh, there's nothing wrong with being a Brendan Fraser fan. I'm okay with that. You, I, I say people should be fans of whoever they want to be a fan of. Uh, just don't watch the stuff like the Kardashians or <laughs> these stupid <laughs> Instagram influencers. You know, find something better. Find some something with talent. You know, you don't have to like everyone's talent, but find some some something that has substance and talent to it. Speaking of unapologetic, I'm going to be unapologetic with this film as well. Uh, Zombieland Double Tap. That's right. This trailer just dropped today. We knew this was coming at some point here. It's, it, they were in production. Uh, just dropped a trailer for Zombieland Double Tap. This is the sequel to the original Zombieland Land featuring Woody Harrelson, Jesse Eisenberg, Emma Stone, and oh, I'm blank, uh, Abigail Breslin. And the trailer delivers. It shows you everything you would expect out of a sequel to Zombieland. If you haven't seen Zombieland, highly recommend uh, watching it. It is it is a comedic horror film, especially if you enjoy like the Shaun of the Dead, you know, that Shaun of the Dead movie uh, along those lines, you're, you're going to love Zombieland if you haven't seen it. I love, I love Zombieland. I think it's great. I'm not going to sit here and say it's a fantastic film. It's, it's a very entertaining uh, film and it's, it's something to see. And it looks like there's going to be lots of other stars in the film because we saw a bunch of them in the trailer uh, and it's just going to be a fun, hilarious, cheesy flick. And, and I'm looking forward to that one coming out. I probably, probably won't get around to seeing it in the theaters. I don't see a lot of stuff in the theaters. Uh, I will be seeing the Jay and Silent Bob reboot in the theater because I've seen every single Kevin Smith film in the theater. Every single View of Universe Kevin Smith film uh, in the theater. Because I, I, I actually haven't seen uh, Tusk yet and I didn't see Yoga Hosers in the, uh, in the theater. So, 
Uh, some Stranger Things news. This one I found really interesting, especially if you're a child of the 80s like myself. Uh, this is... This is, uh, this is, this one was interesting to me. So Stranger Things, they've announced, uh, season four is coming out. In fact, they're going into production on season four very soon. And I, I think, uh, I don't think Bill Murray comes, is he back? Oh, now I gotta go rewatch the trailer. Doug's telling me Bill Murray's back. I hope he is. I, I love me some Bill Murray. That cut my comedic teeth on, on Bill Murray comedies back in the 80s. Uh, but anyway, Stranger Things, they're gonna be going into production on season four. And there's an interesting... What could be, I don't, not a controversy, a bit of a conflict when it comes to Stranger Things in the next season. Uh, one of the main characters who is, uh, oh my gosh, I'm just, I'm blanking on her name. Winona Ryder. I don't know why I'm blanking on her name. Uh, Winona Ryder, who's one of the main characters, she, she is the mother. Uh, and if you haven't seen Stranger Things, this is, this is not a spoiler. I haven't even watched season three yet. She's the mother of one of the, the main characters. She actually uh, shot to stardom in 1985. Uh, playing the main role in a film called Lucas, and she was only like 15 years old. Uh, so they're hitting a point here because Stranger Things is catching up to that time frame in the 80s, uh, as well as the fact that they really lean on pop culture and films and everything else. So you know this stuff is going to come up at some point. So the curious thing is, are the boys going to watch these movies? Lucas is one thing, but you know Beetlejuice needs to be included somehow once they hit that point, and that's Winona Ryder all throughout the entire thing. So it's going to be interesting if, if if they tie that in at all. If they say, "Oh my gosh, it looks just like your just like your mom," uh, you know. So that's going to be interesting to see what they do. Uh, and I recently re read an article about this and kind of what they're going to do. So we'll see with Winona Ryder. It, it's always interesting. This has come up in films and shows before. Uh, not always handled the best. You know, perfect example of that is Ocean's Twelve or Thirteen. One of not Ocean's Eleven. The new, you know. Uh, the newer ones, uh, but that it's going to be interesting to see if they handle it or if they just ignore it. I think with Lucas, like I said, you can ignore it. You cannot ignore it uh, for Beetlejuice. And a little more Stranger Things news. It looks like uh, one of the best, according to Good Housekeeping, according to Good Housekeeping, the most popular and hottest group Halloween costume this year is going to be the kids from Stranger Things. That's right, the kids from Stranger Things. Uh, so if, if you're looking for a group costume, apparently that's going to be the hot thing to, to do. And I always say this when these group costumes come out, any costumes, and it's like, okay, yeah, it's a great idea until you show up to a party and everybody's dressed as the Stranger Things kids. Again, get an original idea. You know, everyone's going to be dressed like Stranger Things. We get it. You like the 80s. You like the show. It's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But if you're over the age of, like, 12, don't wear the most popular Halloween costume out there. Have some originality to it. Or do a play on this, you know, play with the Stranger Things characters somehow. I always enjoy those Halloween costumes. Uh, that being said, wear whatever the hell you want for Halloween. I'm just spoiled because I grew up in the Halloween world. I've talked about it. I used to model Halloween costumes as a kid, so I'm, I'm spoiled when it comes to... I always had original Halloween costumes. Never, none of this, like, everybody's wearing the same costume BS uh, that you run into a lot of times. Now, again, if you're a kid, that's fine. Like, I get going to a kid's Halloween party and there's, like, 12 Elsas, you know, and, and, uh, and like, another 10 Spider-Man costumes. I, I get it. That's, you know, but if, once you hit a certain age, put some thought into it. Have some originality, for God's sake. Uh, Spider-Man Far From Home. Some news out of Spider-Man Far From Home. Uh, this one's tying back into uh, to a story we talked about. Uh, actually, just crossed the $1 billion worldwide threshold at the box office. So it looks like Marvel will retain the rights to Spider-Man based on that threshold, which we kind of knew was going to happen. But we talked about that a few weeks ago. Uh, so just wanted to point out that they did hit that billion-dollar threshold, uh, which is good news for Spider-Man fans and fans of the MCU. Not good news for fans of the MCU and especially fans of my favorite Marvel Cinematic Universe character, which would be Deadpool. Uh, Marvel unveiled their Phase 4 plans at Comic-Con last week. Their Phase 4 plans, a bunch of films. I'm not going to go through all of them. We don't, we're not, this is not a Marvel podcast. Uh, however, I did want to point out that there were no plans as of yet for Deadpool. No Deadpool movies coming in Phase 4. Now, of course, we can all hope that that will change. Uh, the director is being very positive about it and hopes there will be some kind of tie-in here and, and maybe we can get Deadpool uh, tied into another MCU movie, which... Is not preferable. I'll, I'll I'll take it, but it's not preferable. 
Uh, I, I need the R-rated Deadpool. Deadpool and Deadpool 2, fantastic films. Love them. I actually saw Deadpool in the theater with my good friend Doug, who is on the live feed right now. Uh, and I, I need, we need this. We need this. And Ryan, Ryan Reynolds is ageless, but come on. We're going to need another Deadpool film soon. Um, oh, that's interesting. That's an interesting fact. Doug, I'm going to talk about that when we talk more Stranger Things uh, probably next week because that's extra interesting for me because I remember the, the uh, Dungeons and Dragons stigma that existed back in the 80s, really even into the 90s, I think. Uh, so hopefully we'll see some new Deadpool coming out. Just, just no plans as of now. Uh, NBC Universal, we're getting a little more concrete information on their streaming service. It will officially launch in April 2020. April 2020, we don't have cost yet, and we don't have uh, an exact date in April, uh, but it, it, it has been announced that it will debut in April 2020. Um, again, another streaming service that I won't be able to watch, for the love of God. Uh, and speaking of not being able to watch channels and services, CBS, as we talked about last week, has been officially blacked out in a lot of markets on DirecTV. If you're a DirecTV user, you might have noticed that CBS is not available on your service. Uh, and of course, it's going to get worked out. Uh, but again, antenna, antenna, antenna. You really need to watch some CBS? Get an antenna. It costs you like five bucks at Target for an antenna. It's crazy. It's absolutely insane. Uh, how cheap they are, and then you can watch some freaking CBS. That's how I watch network television in my house, is, is with an antenna. That's how you gotta do it. So if you're one of those people that's living without your CBS, get an antenna. It's apparently also available on some streaming services like PlayStation Live and, and stuff like that. Roku, you can probably still access it there, but I'm not fancy enough to have all that stuff. And of course CBS All Access if you're one of those gluttons for punishment that likes to just have a million streaming services and you're paying additional money to have CBS All Access. Or maybe you're a Star Trek fan. You know, and that's why you've got CBS All Access. Alright, moving on a little bit, a little more entertainment news, this, this pertaining to music. Uh, Blink-182 had a look, somewhat brilliant marketing ploy this week. They actually posted uh, on a bunch of social platforms and they actually emailed it. I get emails from them, uh, email updates from Blink-182 because I, you know, I bought merch through them and stuff and so they've obviously got my email address they actually posted a phone number a phone number I'm not gonna give the phone number to any of you out here uh, but if you're a fan of Blink-182 you probably saw this and what happened was if you called the phone number uh, I believe even if you texted it it sent a link back to you and it was like a 10 second clip of their newest single that's coming out uh, the singles actually coming out tomorrow uh, July 26th and it's called Dark Side uh, the 10 second clip I heard it pretty decent um, giving me a little more hope for this new album. And speaking of the new album, I know I gave you a date last week of September 20th that the new Blink-182 album is coming out. We actually have an official title for the upcoming Blink-182 album. That is being released on September 20th. The title of the album is going to be Nine, as in the number nine. N-I-N-E. Nine. That is the title of the album. I don't understand why. I'm sure we'll get a little explanation as to why. I don't, I, I have to, like, think in my head and I'm not going to do it right now. They haven't had nine studio albums, I don't believe. Maybe they have. Good lord, I'm getting old if they have nine studio albums out, or this is going to be their ninth. Uh, and of course, we got a song list from them, which actually, it looks like there's going to be 15 tracks on this album, which is quite a bit. Uh, especially in the punk rock world, they tend to go like 10 to 12 songs. They used to be longer back in the day. Uh, and I'm sure there's like three or four of these are going to be uh, shorter songs that we get from Blink-182 at times. We, they've been doing shorter songs uh, Really since their first album, but second album, uh, Dude Ranch On, a lot of shorter shorter clip songs, you know, like 10, 15 second songs just as filler, and they're always fun songs. Uh, so look forward to that, September 20th. I'm excited about it. I'm always excited about a new uh, punk rock, rock, pop punk album, uh, especially from hometown heroes Blink-182, because they are from San Diego, specifically from Poway. Kind of. They're from Poway. We like to say they're from Poway. Travis isn't. Well, and shit, Skeeb is not from Poway either. Originally, they were from Poway, I guess you could say. <laughs> mm. And more music news. Chris, I see on there, hopefully Bridget is watching as well if she didn't catch wind of this one. Uh, and I don't... I don't want to say it officially, because I did this with the single that was coming out. I don't want to say it officially, uh, but Green Day has been teasing teasing fans with social media posts, and apparently a lot of the pictures people have, have kind of uh, decrypted these photos that they're posting, and they're actually at a studio uh, where they're supposedly 
recording music for their new album. So these are very cryptic posts that they're doing, but the consensus so far is that they are actually in the studio and they are recording for their new album. So hopefully that is the truth. Hopefully we will see a new Green Day album soon because, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm ready for a new freaking Green Day album. It's, it's been almost three years. Uh, Revolution Radio came out in like September 2016, so we're, we're coming close to three years since we've gotten an album uh, from Green Day. And that, that for the bands that I really love, and, and this is just me like being greedy, three years is too long between albums. I, you know, t like that, or that is probably the longest that it's like, all right, I need another album after three years. Need another album. Um, all right, you know, I'm going to skip this again. We're probably just never going to do this. I've had this one thing on the list uh, for the past, like, three episodes, and I think we're just, it's probably never going to get in, but I just, it, it cracks me up because it's its the top ten pop songs that every punk listens to, even if they don't admit it, and I listen to none of them. I don't enjoy any of the songs. In fact, I only recognize, like, two of the songs. Uh, and, and despite one of them being, uh, happier from Marshmallow and the lead singer of Bastille, I, I don't like that song. It's very depressing. Incredibly depressing. Don't watch that music video. Just never watch it. All right, we're going to get into some mental health. Uh, I said on the teaser today, we haven't had a lot of mental health for a while, and that's not really by design. It's just, we took a little break from it after Mental Health Awareness Month, and, and we're going to kind of get back into it. It all, also depends what's going on in the world and, and kind of what's going on with me personally and, and just what's, what's bubbling up across the interwebs uh, and this week was a was a good one to to talk about a few things and in fact there's an article from the mighty uh, somebody that uh, somebody that suffers from debilitating depression uh, talked about and I'm not going to go through this whole thing uh, but talked about how depression steals things from her and has been stealing things from her since she was 13 years old 13 years old uh, and it would steal her voice for example, it would steal her appetite, it would steal her sleep. Uh, and I found this interesting because it was one way to, to think about depression or anxiety or whatever your mental illness might be, uh, to think of it as, as, as someone stealing this time from you, stealing things that make you feel secure from you. And if that helps you to kind of put, not necessarily a face to it, you're not blaming a specific person, but if you look at it from a concrete standpoint, uh, the reason I found it interesting is I think then you can fight back. Then you can fight back, because at the end of this article that she wrote, uh, uh, after everything that he's taken from me, referring to depression as a he, uh, and spoiler alert, I'm taking it back. Taking it back. That gives you a concrete point to start from, to start rebuilding the things that have been taken from you due to depression, anxiety, whatever other mental illness you might be suffering from. And, and I think that's just a great way to think of it. Maybe that doesn't work for you, but maybe it does. And that's why I bring these things up. That's, that's straight from The Mighty, so check it out if you're interested. Uh, the Mighty is a fantastic resource for anyone out there that suffers from mental illness, has mental health problems, uh, or even if you don't personally, but you have someone close to you that does, The Mighty is a fantastic resource to give you a little more understanding of what other people might be going through when it comes to mental health problems and mental illness. Uh, so, so check them out. But I, I, just, I love the thought of, of thinking of it as a, as a concrete person, because then you have something to fight back on. Uh, if, if you suffer from mental illness or you've had mental health problems, you know that it, your, your head just spins. Your head spins at times and you don't even know where to focus it. And then if you try to focus, it focuses all over the place. And that's why I talk, when I talked about defragging your brain a few episodes ago and, and how that can be helpful for me and can, could be helpful for a lot of people, kind of putting things back in order in your mind and in your brain and, 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 and taking control over it that way. So whether it's that, whether it's thinking of depression as a person that you need to that you need to take back your freedom from, take back your appetite, your sleep, you know, your your voice, whatever it might be, if that's helpful to you, uh, then that's a great way to think about it. And speaking of of doing great things when it comes to mental illness and mental health, Sophie Turner's back in the news. She's been pretty quiet on social platforms. I actually don't follow her personally, but these things come up uh, because of of me research my my own research into mental illness and mental health. Uh, and actually had tweeted out a link. There's apparently a group of, of teenagers, young people, uh, that are working, they have a campaign uh, where they're trying to support uh, mental health days for kids, for, for teens especially, mental health days. So we're not talking sick days where I have the flu, I have a cold, mental health days, where you can actually take those days. Uh, and I've had this come up 
in multiple places that I've worked, and I actually had a boss years ago, uh, and I'm still in touch with him. He actually runs a runs a very very good podcast uh, revolving around the, the sports business industry, and he said to me a long time ago, years and years ago, when I was at Disney, uh, he said, "Take a mental health day. Sometimes you need a mental health day." And that at that time, that was the first time I'd ever heard of it. And I said, "Oh my God, this is fantastic." Sometimes you just need to recenter yourself. You don't need to. It, it's not because you're sick. You have a cold or the flu, whatever it is. You just you need a mental health day to take care of your own mental health. And of course, that is still a sickness, but it's so stigmatized and has been for the longest time that we need to make it okay, especially for teenagers. As an adult, you can you can push back and say, no, no, you have no right to ask me why I'm having a sick day. But teenagers, younger people, so that they understand it's okay to take a break for your mental health. And good on you, Sophie Turner, for tweeting this out because I actually wasn't even aware of this. And it's, this campaign's been going on for a little while now. I wasn't even aware of it. And I'm sure because of, of Sophie Turner's stature uh, within, within the entertainment world, but of course on social platforms because she's done some great things. Uh, we, I talked about her months ago uh, regarding her, her handling of, of Piers Morgan. Um, it's fantastic that she is doing the, well, I don't want to say, she, she's doing the work to support uh, such an important campaign, and I think that is absolutely fantastic. Uh, one more thing I want to talk about when it comes to mental health. This one is very near and dear to my heart, uh, and if you're interested in hearing more about this, I may try to just post this, the entirety of this article, um, on the Facebook page, but even beyond that, and I've always said this, shoot me an email through SeanOroarkLive.com, and, and I can kind of help you out, talk you through some of these things, if it's something that you think will help you, or you find even just interesting. Uh, and that would be an article that came out, it's actually from NPR, uh, and it's how to help your anxious partner and yourself. So this is for people that maybe don't have mental health issues themselves, mental illness themselves, uh, but live with somebody or have someone close to them uh, that that has a mental health problem or a mental illness. Uh, and, and it's steps. I'm going to go through kind of top line on these things and just give you own, my own personal experiences. Uh, one of these would be start by addressing the symptoms. Um, and that's one thing that's very important when it comes to, because you can't, you can't fix anxiety, you can't fix mental illness, you can help it. And so when you start by addressing the symptoms in your partner or someone that's close to you, that's going to help you have a, a slightly better understanding of what they're going through. You can, you're never going to understand exactly what they're going through, but you can gain a better understanding of what they're going through, and that's one way to do it. This next thing is one of the most important things that you can possibly do as a, as a partner to somebody that has a mental illness. Uh, don't minimize feelings. Don't minimize feelings. My wife is absolutely fantastic about this. Uh, she has learned that over the years that we've been together that, that it's not always rational. My feelings when it comes to obsessive compulsive disorder and obsessive anxiety disorder are not always rational. So never minimize those things. It might seem crazy that someone is thinking that way. It might seem crazy that someone is talking that way. Never, ever minimize it. Just never. Never minimize it. Uh, help your partner seek treatment and participate when you can. This doesn't always mean take them into a doctor's office. Sometimes this is understanding what can help them to fight back against their mental illness. Maybe it is a doctor. Maybe it's a certain activity, you know? Uh, for me, it's, it's working out and it's music. My, my, it's funny. When it comes to going to punk rock shows, my wife's always like, yeah, as long as we don't have anything else because she knows that helps get me centered. That helps bring me back down to earth and it helps, it helps me battle against my own personal mental illness. Uh, it doesn't mean that music is always the answer. It doesn't mean that, that activity, physical activity is always the answer. But understand what that is. Understand what that is. And then participate when you can. Encourage it. And in fact, encourage, but don't push. There is definitely a line. And I think even the best partner can, can sometimes go over that line when they're trying to push, because all they want to do is make you feel better. Trust me. I, I, I know this. My wife, is if, if she could snap her fingers and make me feel better, she, she would do it in a second. I mean, anyone would do that. But she would do anything she could uh, to make me feel better. But don't push. Don't push too much. There is that line. And you can end up pushing them further down that spiral. Um, cultivate a life outside your partner's anxiety. I think this goes without saying. Uh, don't focus so much on your on your partner's mental illness. Don't focus so much on your own mental illness. It's tough and it's always there and it's never going away. 
but you also have to have other things. You have to have room for other people and other things in your life, and that, that is a way to do that. Um, and this is another very important one. Help your partner remember that the goal is to manage anxiety, not to get rid of it. Manage mental illness. You're never getting rid of it. I'm never going to be cured of obsessive compulsive disorder. It's never going to happen. But I can manage it. I can make things better in my daily life. And my wife can also do those things. And, and, and that's where it becomes important as a partner is understanding the ways that you can help without pushing. And not saying, well, just don't think like that. Those are the worst things you can do. Don't minimize it. And know that you're never getting rid of it. All you can do is help. And I think beyond the, the bullet points that are here is, is just be that, be that pillar. Be that pillar of support. No matter what. Irrational or not, be that pillar of support uh, to your loved ones that, that are dealing with a, a mental illness, mental health problems. Especially a debil what can be at times a debilitating mental illness. That's what you can do. And hopefully... We make the world a better place. And like I've said since the beginning of Go Tell to the Wall podcast, if one teenager hears that and they feel better, then my job is done. Not that they're going to feel better, but feel a little bit better about themselves. All right, let's move on to some tech news. Somehow we're like, we were on time to start today, and I'm like on time with the thing. I, I don't know what's happening today. Something's going on. Something's, I don't know. Uh, Bridget and Chris probably implanted some kind of, oh, it's probably that uh, Elon Musk thing. They're actually controlling me now. And that's why we start on time and we're on time with the overall episode. Yeah. Wouldn't put it past them. Of course, they would never do that, but <laughs> wouldn't put it past them. <laughs> All right, tech news. DoorDash. Do you guys use DoorDash out there? I used to use DoorDash a little bit, and then they got my order completely wrong like three times and did nothing about it, and I... Didn't eat lunch one day, and I was like, well, screw you. Your one job is to get me food. And the most ridiculous thing about DoorDash is I, I order it, but not because I'm lazy. But I order, I, I tend to order a little fast food every Friday. I get up, have some time with my daughter. We go out and play. Uh, then she'll have lunch, and I put her down for a nap. And then that's when I order my junk food. I, I, I... <laughs> All right, Chris has admitted he's not controlling me because I'd be cursing more. <laughs> How about them socks, though, Chris? What was it 19, 19 runs they scored today against the Yankees? Got to remember to text Seth after this. Uh, but anyway, I, I, do, I get my junk food on Friday, so I'm not eating it around my kid. Uh, and I just enjoy it after being in the studio. And, 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 and I get up, and what I, I, she goes down for a nap. I do some pod work, and then I get my food. That's the way to go. The thing is, I tend to order from Jack in the Box, which is, it's literally a half mile from my house. Half mile from my house. I thought 19 runs. Uh, half mile from my house. But I get it delivered because I can't leave my kid here. I can't. I'm, I'm sitting here, and I just, I need it delivered. You know? It, it, it seems silly, but, so DoorDash couldn't do that. Couldn't do that. Since then, I've started using Postmates uh, for my Friday meal, and occasionally on the weekends. Like, my wife and I order food, you know, at night when we're just at home. I, so I use, I use it for that, too, but... That was the main thing I was using it for. And it came to light recently that tips were not actually going to the drivers. Tips for DoorDash uh, were not going to the drivers. They were going to DoorDash instead. Yes, really. I'm not even kidding. Here's the thing with it. So DoorDash, when they have a dasher, like they call them, uh, pick up an order. It's agreed upon with the dasher. So let's say they say, okay, $4 is what you're being paid for, for delivering this order. And don't get me wrong, because DoorDash, not only do they charge, they charge you for delivery and taxes are a little, it's, it's crazy. There's a delivery fee. There's also like a handling fee. You're, you're paying a couple bucks anyway. So let's say it's $4 that the, the dasher has agreed to and you tip $2. Because it didn't hit that original threshold, they get no money. Essentially, for example, if they said $4 for this, you would have to tip $5 for them to get any piece of the tip. They're not getting the tip. Just the tip. Not getting it though. Not getting just the tip. Uh, and of course, there is some backlash and uproar over this because, duh, duh, DoorDash. Like, I, I'm, I give a tip. I, if that was still the case and it stays the case, don't tip on DoorDash because they're already making enough money off of you. It's not going to the driver. Or have some cash and slip them a couple dollars, you know? Of course, because of the uproar, they have announced that they will be changing this because tips should go to the frickin' drivers. It's common sense. Like, and, and even if, if you're going to do that kind of bullshit, at least say in the app, the tips do not go to the drivers. 
You know, then it's like, okay, but be upfront about it. Any Anytime you tip at any kind of business, obviously restaurants and, and, and that kind of stuff, food service, but even at, uh, uh, you know, like retail places and stuff. I go to my collective down the street. They got a tip jar there. I always throw a dollar or two in there for the person that helped me. You assume that that's going to the people that are helping you, that are working there, not the company. So really just stop using DoorDash. But if you are going to use DoorDash, don't leave them tips until they fix this thing and it's actually going to the drivers. Uh, we got some cool news out of Ikea, if you want to go brave the Ikea crowd at any time. Uh, they actually are carrying Sonos speakers now. If you're familiar with Sonos, these are really high-end speakers. They, they're fantastic speakers. I don't have any in my house. I'm way too cheap for that shit. Uh, <laughs> they're actually working with Sonos, and they have a couple different speaker variations that are available at Ikea. Uh, one of them is a shelf speaker for $99. They've also got a table lamp speaker for like $179. $99 for a Sonos speaker. You're probably not going to beat that anywhere. So if, if you want to brave Ikea, go pick up a nice Sonos speaker for yourself and, and listen to high-quality sound. Oh, man, speaking of high-quality sound, this is just completely off book right now. And I'm going to make a confession to all of you out there because I have, I have, I have like, flown this flag for years ever since they started doing it. My wife needed a new cell phone. Like, desperately needed a new cell phone. And we're thinking about leaving Verizon. I've been on Verizon for, oh, God, so long. I've been on Verizon. I was on AT&T when Disney supplied a phone. But even then, I was still on Verizon, you know. And uh, I still got a Verizon tablet even after this. Uh, so my wife decided we were going to go to Google Fi. So we're going to get some new Pixel phones. Got a new Pixel 3 coming. No headphone jack. I'm one of those people. Going to have a phone with no headphone jack. I know I've always said I would never do this. But I did for my wife. And I had to get a new phone. Mine's getting a little old as well. Put it to oh, <laughs> put the Sonos together with an Allen wrench. Uh, yeah, you have to. That's a good point. That's why it's so cheap. The Sonos is so cheap because you have to put it together. <laughs> but I'm gonna have a Pixel Three next week. No more headphone jack. Freaking dongle life. Hashtag dongles. I'm not super happy about it, but it is what it is. I'm gonna have a freaking dongle. And of course, I've still got my computer with a headphone jack, and I've still got my tablet with a headphone jack. I've got all my music on there, and if I really want to go audiophile style with it with my good studio headphones, that's probably what I'll do. Uh, but I felt the need to confess that to all of you, because I've been waving that flag for years. Why is there no headphone jack? Headphone jacks are coming back, too, by the way. The uh, Pixel 3a, which is their cheaper, cheaper handset right now, actually has a headphone jack. My, my brother-in-law, Dante, was here last weekend. Uh, he just got one. I was like, oh, let me see that thing. Headphone jack. I was like... You'd be kidding me. Uh, so I'm sure the next Pixel will have a headphone jack. And in two years, when I'm ready to upgrade my, my current phone, I will go back to the damn headphone jack. Oh, I know. It's crazy. eBay. We got some news from eBay. This is actually some interesting news. Uh, eBay is actually getting into shipment and fulfillment coming next year. Uh, they are looking to have a some fulfillment centers for their sellers on eBay. This isn't going to be like the dude down the street selling one thing, but this is for uh, essentially the retailers on eBay. And they're doing this, obviously, to compete with Amazon. It makes sense. So there will be warehouses where these retailers that are running their storefronts just have everything fulfilled. This is a common practice. Uh, I, I, working in, in radio, television, and film marketing, uh, we had fulfillment warehouses. I mean, there's, there's fulfillment warehouses that work with multiple companies, and then everything just gets shipped out through those. And just, you know, say. And eBay's doing this. Makes sense for them. eBay still does a ton of money, they, a ton of uh, revenue. They don't do near as much as Amazon, obviously. Uh, but then, of course, the other, the other side of this is you're going to see eBay boxes going around the way that Amazon does. Uh, so, you, you know, eBay is going to kind of be top of mind. I still enjoy some eBay. I tend to go there when I'm looking for some hard-to-find uh, collectibles and, and that sort of thing. And eBay is a great, uh, great resource for that. Oh, speaking of new phones, Samsung, the Galaxy Fold is coming out. Uh, Samsung has confirmed a September release. We knew it was coming back, but we now know what month it's coming back. Don't have an exact date yet. Uh, and all of the issues have supposedly been fixed. And some more news out of Google. Uh, kind of knew this was coming. The Google Nest Hub Max. Uh, this is the, it's the new bigger smart display. And it's actually the first with the new Nest Home branding. So it's not the Google Home Max, it's the Nest Home Max. Remember, we talked about that a while ago. They're putting everything, all the home stuff, under that nice little Nest window name, whatever it might be. Uh, so look forward to that. Rumor is a September release. We don't have an exact release date on that, but it is coming soon. Uh, and Facebook Messenger, we got some news out of 
Facebook Messenger Kids. This was a Facebook Messenger app aspect of Facebook that was supposed to be totally safe for kids. Go to find out that there were holes in the safety protocol uh, and people could get access to your kids that you weren't giving permission to have access to your kids. And what do we say to that? Wolfens, common sensors, social media world podcast consumers, no kids on social platforms. Just stop. You don't need kids on social platforms. Have them read a fucking book. They don't need Facebook. They don't need Instagram. They don't need YouTube. Definitely don't need Twitter. Oh, God, the muck rate going on on Twitter. Read a book. Go watch some Daniel Tiger. Get some common sense from a tiger. Daniel Tiger's a good one. If you don't watch Daniel Tiger, put that on for him. All right, let's get into some common sense. We are running short on time. Man, I don't know what's happening. Like, we're just... Things are on it today. I'm, I swear, I, I'm not cursing enough. So Chris is not controlling me, but he's somehow keeping me in line. Maybe it's that. It might be that shock therapy. Whoo! It's working, Chris and Bridget. <laughs> shock therapy. I'm not actually in shock therapy, people. Don't be ridiculous. All right, a little common sense. A couple common sense topics I want to talk about. Uh, Disneyland family brawl. That's right. You saw this thing. I'm not going to explain it. There was a brawl in not only at Disneyland but in freaking Toontown. In Toontown. Family members brawling, cursing, throwing punches. Had to be broken up by some bystanders and then eventually Disney security. Uh, charges have filed against three people. These people originally <laughs> originally denied it all. They were like, I don't know what you're talking about. Well, what's this video of you? Well, I don't know. <laughs> but there's video. But I don't know. That's not me. I just, I, I always want to be a fly on a wall in interrogation rooms for stuff like that. No, I don't know what you're talking about. But here's video of you. Well, I don't know what you're talking about. But there were like 50 people watching you. I don't know what you're talking about. But you said your name out loud. It's on the video and the 50 witnesses also heard your name out loud. I don't know what you're talking about. Jesus Christ, just admit it. But three people have been charged. Uh, good, these people deserve it. But then, of course, we have some more news out of Disneyland. Oh, man. The Disneyland is actually going to be selling boozy popsicles. That's right. Booze popsicles. Alcoholic popsicles. Because we are in a heat wave. I get it. I kind of want one of these... Uh, why not right now? I got the AC coming on me, so I'm not, but I wouldn't mind one of these sitting around on a Saturday uh, during this heat wave, like the weekend. Uh, they got a white sangria and a mango mimosa. So a sangria uh, and mimosa popsicles. This is just interesting because it could be great. I mean, trust me, if you've ever been, to, if you've been to Disneyland in the past few years, you kind of need a drink to get through that stuff. That way, you, you know, because you're kind of squeezed in there and everything else. However, these boozy popsicles could also lead to more Disneyland family brawls. So I don't know where that's going to go. Should be interesting. Eh. They, I mean, they sell booze at California Adventure. It's not. This isn't new. And I believe they have booze in the new uh, Star Wars land. So it, it, it's not anything new. It's just an interesting little tidbit for you from Disneyland. And remember that straight pride parade that's going to be happening in Boston? In Boston area. And everyone's like, ah, Boston, ah. And I was like, it's not Boston's fault. It's a bunch of idiots' faults. They just happen to be in Boston. Well, ah, uh, California. Because we're looking at possibly another straight pride parade here in Modesto, California. That's right. Hasn't been approved by the city council yet, but people have applied for a permit uh, for a straight pride parade in Modesto, California. And of course, this all just comes down to more fragile male egos Get over yourselves. It's like, stop this shit. So sick of it. Straight pride parade. You don't need to have a straight pride parade. You had straight pride parade for 2,000 years, guys. Or hundreds of years, at least. I know. That's a good point, Chris. Uh, Disneyland recreational marijuana. At least gummy. Oh my god. Mickey head-shaped. Uh, that'd be so bad, because kids could get a hold of them. But Mickey, Mickey head-shaped edible gum. Oh, man. Oh man, and I know Bridget fed you that one, Chris. I know because that that would that is a way to get through Disneyland. And I will be honest with everybody. I used to know the spots when I was a teenager. <laughs> when I was in high school, growing up in San Diego, we would go to Disneyland on occasion. I knew the spots where you could uh, no cameras. You get away with smoking a little smoking a little weed there in, in uh, Disneyland. But yeah, that would make it more enjoyable. <laughs> uh, speaking of making things more enjoyable. Coca-Cola is officially going to sell uh, an alcoholic drink nationwide in Japan. I talked recently about... <laughs> I knew she did, Chris. That's a Bridget line. <laughs> I knew she fed him that one. 
Uh, they were testing this out. We talked about it a few months ago. They tested it out in a few cities in Japan, and it was so successful that now they are going to sell the uh, alcoholic Coca-Cola drink nationwide. Nationwide. I mean, common sense. Who doesn't want more alcoholic drinks? I don't know. I'm enjoying my beer. That's the other thing, too. Is like I see the appeal for certain people. Uh, like, what are these? White Claw, I, I, I've seen, and, and something seltzer. Alcoholic seltzer drinks, like not for me. I, I, if I'm gonna have a drink out of a can, I'm, I'm gonna have a beer. You know, if I'm gonna have a mixed drink. I'm gonna have a mixed drink. Um, it's right up for alley, Chris. I, like that's, I get yeah. See, Bridget and I see eye to eye on that kind of stuff. <laughs> that's the thing. <laughs> uh, bloodshot eye to bloodshot. <laughs> I kid, I kid. We're definitely still on the rails here, folks. Um, all right, and another follow up. From actually last week, we are talking about a, a rare Nike Moose shoe that was going up auction, I believe it was at Sotheby's, and they were expecting to get about $100,000 for this one shoe. Well, it shattered the auction record for sneakers because that rare moon shoe, not even a shoe you can wear, it's just an old shoe, sold for $437,500. $437,000 with an extra $500 on there. Shattered the record, the auction record for sneakers. Uh, yeah, not surprised. <laughs> I, I mean, I would hope that that's... I'm surprised that this useless shoe shattered the record, but I'm not surprised I'm not surprised that that was the record. Almost $500,000 for one, one shoe. Just one. One shoe. And it's not like Willie freaking Mays wore it or something. It's just, it's a moon shoe. It's, yeah, I don't know. I don't understand. I like sneakers too, but I, I spend $42 on a pair of Vans, and I'm like, oh my god, this is great. $500,000 sneaker, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> uh, we got some news for those of you out there that don't like meat, for the non-meat eaters. Duncan is, is soon launching a breakfast sandwich with Beyond Meat Sausage. Chris, what do you think about that? I know Chris will not be eating that. Chris is a big Duncan fan, being from the New England area. Uh, but they will have a Beyond Meat Sausage sandwich. Makes sense. Everybody's getting on the Beyond Meat wagon here, uh, and and Duncan's just the next to do it. We're gonna have Beyond Meat everywhere. I've I've tried the Beyond Meat. It, it's not it's not bad for a burger. Uh, you definitely it doesn't taste like meat. It's not bad, but it doesn't taste like meat. It's it's different. Uh, but being a meat eater, I I'm like uh, give me the meat. You know I I don't think eat, if you like Beyond Meat, have Beyond Meat. If you're a vegetarian, don't like it, have the Beyond Meat. I don't see Beyond Meat becoming like the new norm for anybody, for anyone and everyone that, that eats a burger. Uh, but it is nice to have options for people out there that, that don't want to eat meat or can't eat meat, whatever it might be. So uh, good on you, Duncan. More options out there for everybody. I was going to talk about this Forever 21 thing, but I don't, I don't care. I don't want to. Uh... Oh, see, Bridget didn't like the Beyond Meat at all. And Chris is not happy about the Beyond Meat at Duncan. Chris, Chris loves some Duncan. In fact, I believe Chris owns the, the Duncan shirt that says, Friends don't let friends drink Starbucks. That's how you know you're a Duncan fan when you got one of those. I tried to get uh, one of those shirts when I was in Connecticut a few years ago, and, and they were like out of them at the two or three Duncans I went to. They were like, yeah, we haven't had those in a while. Uh, like I said, I was going to talk about this Forever 21 thing, but eh, eh. I don't know. Look it up if you want. Forever 21 and Adkins. Sending Adkins bars to people. People still shop at Forever 21. I think I'm just old. And that's why. It's for young people, right? I remember Forever 21 when I was a teenager, walking through the mall with your friends and all the all the ladies were like, Forever 21, we're going to go in here. And you're just like, oh man, <laughs> it's going to be an hour. Uh, but apparently it's still around and they're sending out Atkins bars to everyone. So if you're interested in that story, look it up. Google. Do it. All right, that being said, uh, we are done for this week. We were like almost perfect on timing here. I definitely uh, grandstanded a bit there at the end. Uh, thank you, as always, to Bridget and Chris for joining this week and, and feeding me great information. Thank you to everyone else that joined on the live feed. Um, and we will be back next week with episode 105. In two weeks, there will likely be a skipped week. Uh, I have a scheduling conflict. I've actually got a wedding to go to um, that, I, that I will be just slammed with, with, uh, with everything for that wedding. So we'll possibly be two weeks from now looking at no episode. But next week... We will be back with episode 105, so look forward to that. And remember, uh, follow us on all your favorite social platforms. 
uh, Twitter, at Tell the Wall Pod and at Magic Muppet. Also, Facebook.com slash Go Tell It to the Wall. And, of course, YouTube. Head on over there. Search Go Tell It to the Wall. Subscribe to our page. And, most importantly, would be SeanO'RourkeLive.com. That's right, SeanO'RourkeLive.com. And don't forget to subscribe to Go Tell It to the Wall if you're not already subscribed. Uh, wherever you get your podcasts, wherever you consume your podcasts, we are pretty much everywhere except for SoundCloud because SoundCloud is terrible. Uh, but you can find it on Podstitcher, uh, Google Play, uh, Apple Podcasts, Spotify. We get a lot of listening on Spotify because people use it, and that just made it easy for everyone that was already listening to the podcast. So please, please, please make sure you are subscribed. Like I said, we'll be back next week, same wall place, same wall time, with episode 105. This has been episode 104. I am, of course, your favorite podcast host, the one and only Sean O'Rourke. And remember, wall fans, common sensors, podcast consumers, social media world, no matter what you do, no matter where you go, no matter who you're with, and no matter why you are doing it, always, always use common sense. Couldn't find my cursor there for a minute. Uh, Bridget and Chris, thank you as always for joining. I don't know what happened. I was so far behind today and I was exhausted today. Uh, Zoe did not sleep. My daughter didn't sleep like almost at all last night. Then she didn't nap today and I was so far behind. But somehow, like, I, I, I yeah, I don't know. I, I channeled Barry Allen a little bit and just was like, and we're done. And we started, actually started most, for the most part on time. That's probably the, the closest to on time we've been in like a year or so. Uh, and then, of course, we, we, I give it like an hour, but it's always about five minutes over, and somehow we did that as well. Uh, but thank you guys for joining. Thank you, everyone else that was in and out of the live feed. Uh, thank you, anyone that's catching this after the fact. It will, of course, be uploaded to YouTube over the next few days. Uh, but just an FYI, I've been having some YouTube problems, and in fact, the, in, the full live feed for episode 103 is not on YouTube yet because they've been having some technical issues. Uh, and honestly, it's just been so busy with everything else that I haven't gone through and, and kind of re redone everything. So that'll be popping up as well uh, if you're one of the people that likes to watch on YouTube um, and, and was wondering where episode 103 is. But this one will go up in the next couple days as well. And uh, make sure remember, make sure you're subscribed. Follow us on all the social platforms. I'm not going to list them again. I feel like I listed them four times throughout that podcast. And we will be back uh, next week. Same wall place, same wall time with episode 105. The following week, probably no episode, uh, just because I've, I've been slammed with with family wedding stuff. Not my own wedding, but family wedding that uh, that we got to go to and we got to prepare for and all the other good stuff. Uh, so so just keep that in mind. I'll remind everyone next week as well. Um, so thanks for joining, wall fans, common sensors, uh, podcast consumers, and social media world. Have a great week. And remember, if you've got complaints, you can go tell them to a wall. <laughs>